Just as the trim and extend commands work similarly, the fillet and the chamfer commands are also just as similar to each other. The fillet command creates a tangent arc between two lines. The chamfer creates an angled line between two lines. The processes are similar. You start the command, you define the arc radius for the fillet, or in the case of the chamfer, you, you define the distances for where the chamfer lines will go, and then you pick your lines. Either command is also very useful for quickly extending and or trimming two lines at a corner or at a vertice. Let's open up the chamfer fillet example file. And click open. Here we have just some completed boxes with squared or round corners and some other lines that just aren't quite finished. Now, to start the fillet command, of course, you just type in the word fillet, F-I-L-L-E-T, or you can type in the letter F. The fillet command is found here on the modify panel in the ribbon. It's also where you find the chamfer and the blend curves command because they are all very similar to each other and work in almost identical ways. So we've started the command and we need to pick our objects. Click one and then click two. And as you can see here, it gives you a preview of what it's going to look like. And there you go, it drew a tangent arc. Now since this box was a polyline, it kept the entire thing as a polyline, which is nice. Start the fillet command again, hit the letter R for radius. And right now it's set to two units. Let's change that to four and press enter and click on your box. There you go. If I hit enter again, I can just start going and I will use the last setting for the fillet radius that was used. And since this was a polyline, it erased that old fillet and replaced it with a new one. So that's the fillet command. The chamfer command works in almost the exact way except it's a squared corner and not a rounded one. It's found right here in the modify panel in the ribbon. Now I can use the settings that are already here, but I don't know exactly what they are. Defining the distances though for the chamfer are a bit more complicated than the fillet command. There are two distances to define. We want to chamfer two different lines, in this case, these two edges of our box. So to define the distances, press in the letter D, press enter. Right now it's set to three units. Now you can make these distances to be the same if you like, and the majority of the time that's probably what you're going to want to do. Now the first distance will be along the first line you select. So if we pick this line first, this distance will be applied. Then when we pick our second line, the second distance will be applied to it. Let's start off by just leaving it at the number three for both distances. And this will draw a chamfer that's three units from the endpoint in, and then three units from this endpoint in to the right. As you can see our preview, this is what it's going to look like. Just puts a nice little 45 degree angle, three units in from each endpoint. If we start the command again, type D for distance. Now let's make the first one to be one unit, and we'll make the second distance to be three. As you saw here, since we typed in one for the first unit, it will default to copy the same value because typically you will want them to be the same, but it's not always the case. This is going to be our first line, so it's going to come back one unit here, but then come up three units. You'll see in the preview. We pick our first line, and then we pick our second, and that's another chamfer. When you fill it or chamfer, lines can abut or go past or not even touch each other. Let's look at one of these other examples here. So if I go to fillet something with the radius two, for example, these two lines don't even connect, but AutoCAD will extend them as needed or trim them as needed. Same case up here, they're being trimmed. So the fillet command and the chamfer command are both two very useful commands to clean things up. Now the chamfer command's command alias is CHA. Press enter, let's give it a distance of two and two. And you can see here, it trims everything up nice and neat. Or in that case, extended the lines. It cleans it up quite well. 
Now, many times we don't want an arc or a chamfer. We just want the two lines to meet at their intersections to create a corner. You'll do that a lot. You can use either command to do this. Just set your fillet radius to zero. And pick your points. And it makes a radius of zero, which is nothing. So that means there is no radius. Chamfer is the same thing. Set your distance to zero in both cases. And then pick your two lines. And there's your corner. Now there's another way to do this. So if your radius is set to four. Now let's say you want this radius to be zero. Well, you can start your fillet command, hit radius, type in zero, and go about creating your fillet. Or, regardless of what the radius is set to, hold down the shift key and pick your two points. And now we got a square corner. The same trick will work with the chamfer command. Now, if you try out the blend curves command, the blend curves command will create a tangent or smooth spline object between the endpoints of two open curves or lines, arcs, etc. So, if I want an arc that's smooth and tangent, it's meaning it starts in this line, extends out, and begins to curve back around, comes this way, that's kind of hard to do. I can't really do that with the fillet or chamfer command, but the blend curves command will do that. And it too has a preview, so you can get an idea of what it looks like. So I can pick two different objects and get what I need. Now these are splines, so you can go and you can edit them in different ways. We'll talk more about splines in a different section. But if you have two objects, and they can be lines, polylines, or arcs, and you can use the fillet command or the chamfer command on them to close them up around the edge or put a corner on it. 